The McKay Bridge needs replacing. Hi, I'm Peter Ziobrowski with Halifax Shipping News, and today I'm going to talk about the McKay Bridge and what options exist for either repairing it or replacing it. Locally, the McKay Bridge is known as the New Bridge, being the newer of two bridges built across the uh, harbour. This one opened in 1970 and is an early um, orthotropic deck design. As a result of that, while the bridge is still considered to be safe, it is more lightly built than the same type of bridge would be built today. As a result, it suffers from a lot of wear issues, which are evident on, uh, with the pavement condition. When you're on the bridge, you notice an awful lot of flex to it. For these reasons, a study was recently commissioned by Halifax Harbour Bridges to look at options to either repair or replace the bridge once it reaches the end of its service life around 2040. Those options include either rehabilitating the bridge, rehabilitating the bridge and building a second bridge parallel to it, or outright replacement of the bridge. In this video, I'm going to go over the options and some of the benefits and drawbacks to each of them. The first option is rehabilitating the existing bridge. What that actually means is replacing most of it. Uh, because the bridge was so lightly built, a big lift style replacement activity is not going to be possible. There's not enough reserve strength in the suspension cables so they're either going to have to be outright replaced or supplemented with secondary cables. A new deck is then going to have to be slung underneath um, and it's going to be limited to four lanes with no shoulders. So we're going to have basically the same bridge geometry. This option comes with a lot of downsides. It's going to result in long bridge closures. That's why this is one of the least favorite options. Um, but the bridge is basically going to stay more or less the same as it is today. The second option is rehabilitating the bridge the same way we did the first time, but adding active transportation lanes, bike and pedestrian lanes, one on either side of the bridge, uh, which would increase the width, but would not really add any traffic capacity, no additional capacity for uh, transit. It still has all the same disadvantages of option one, with long closures, difficulty staging and planning the work. We would still need to reinforce cables either by outright replacing them or supplementing them with the second one. The third option includes rehabilitating the existing bridge and building a second parallel suspension bridge next to it. There's a couple of benefits to this. Uh, the first is that the new bridge could be Put in place before the rehabilitation work was done on the existing span. This minimizes traffic disruption but it also results in there being two structures. Uh, because the current span are four lanes uh, with no shoulders, by adding a second bridge of the same size we're able to reduce the number of lanes down to three, so two traffic, one uh, bus, and we still have room left over to increase some shoulders and add an active transportation uh, lane to the bridge and we would do the mirror of that on the new span. Uh, the new span would be similar size and design. Uh, one notable difference though would be that the towers would be made out of cast concrete instead of the current steel. So the second option is to outright replace the bridge. Like the last option we looked at, this has a big advantage in that the current bridge can stay in place until the new bridge is opened not causing traffic delays uh, or construction headaches or scheduling problems. A couple of options were looked at for uh, what the new design of the new bridge would look like and I'm going to go over those now. So the first option is a uh, cable stayed suspension bridge uh, with a six lanes 500 meter uh, main span. Being a modern bridge, it's going to be designed to last for 100 years, which is going to be better than the 75 that we get out of a rehabilitated uh, steel bridge. It's going to include two active transportation lanes. Uh, it's going to have the bus lanes and it's going to have the existing four lanes of traffic. There's going to be issues with acquiring land, of course, to build a bridge. But generally, I think the new bridge is 
probably the way to go. Second option is to build a net new suspension bridge with six lanes. Uh, again, this would have a hundred year design life, concrete towers. Um, these new bridges are physically much larger than the existing bridge. The towers are taller, you know, even though they are bridging the same body of water in basically the same spot. Same advantages and disadvantages with this bridge as the last option. The third option is another cabled state design. This one has an 800 meter main span. The big advantage to this is it puts the Dartmouth side uh, bridge tower wholly on land. One of the big concerns with the current McKay Bridge is that one of the towers is in the channel and because of that it's at risk for collision with uh, container ships or other vessels transiting through the narrows. Protection can obviously be uh, provided through the use of dolphins and uh, rock armoring. Uh, however, if we put that tower solely on land, we, but that eliminates the possibility of collision. One other thing I'll add about this option, and this is really my favorite option, is that the towers are kind of an A-frame shape, and so it's gonna look really, really good on the skyline. Coming into Halifax from the Bedford Basin, or even just approaching it from uh, within town, uh, this is gonna be a great looking bridge, and I hope this is the option that they pick. The next option is basically the same alignment, but with a traditional suspension bridge. Uh, six lanes, 800 meter center span, uh, tower is, both towers are on land, so out of the way of ship traffic. But the next option is a cable state bridge, uh, but this is really the budget option because it's only four lanes. So it doesn't add those bus lanes, it's the active transportation lanes uh, and uh, the 100 year lifespan that all of these uh, replacement bridges would have built to modern standards and tolerances. Um, but it doesn't have the width and uh, you know, if we're going to build a new bridge, I'm generally not one to add capacity to roads but I think we're well served by the size of the current bridge and giving some more space will alleviate some of the problems that we have with the current bridge and actually allow us to do some transit priority. And then another bad option is to basically build a uh, new suspension bridge, four lanes. Um, so basically replace what we have now. Uh, again, this would be built to modern standards, so it would have the 100 year design life, but we really wouldn't gain a whole lot of extra uh, out of this project. The report includes full costing for these options. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details here, but basically the cheapest option is around a billion dollars um, as, as sort of a high level estimate. Uh, so this is, you know, not a cheap project by any means, but it is one that needs to happen. And believe it or not, it is actually cheaper to replace the bridge entirely from scratch rather than trying to rehabilitate it. So I hope those first three options aren't even considered. And like I said, that 800 meter center span cable stay bridge is going to be gorgeous. That's really the one we should go with. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell to be notified of uh, future videos. If you have any questions, uh, or, you know, even just want to share what your favorite option is, leave a comment down below.